Oh, sorry. Did I forget something? <gasps> of course, we haven't finished the Lorax. Part three. Let's see what V is up to, because we are definitely interested in Lorax, he, the. I repeat, cried the Lorax, I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told him. Shut up, if you please. I rushed across the room, and in no time at all, I built a radio phone. I put it in a quick box. I put in a quick call. I called on my brothers and uncles and aunts, and I said, Listen here, there's a wonderful chance for the whole Wensler family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast. Take the road to North Niche. Turn left at Weehawk and sharp right at South Stitch. And in no time at all, in the factory I built, the whole Wensler family was working full tilt. We were knitting, sneeds, just as busy as bees, to the sound of the chopping of the truffula trees. Oh, who owns the factory? Yes, the Wensler family. The Wensler. What are they chopping? Yes, truffula trees. For the truffula truss. Then, <laughs> oh baby, oh, how my business did grow. Now chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I quickly invented my super axe hacker, which whacked off four truffula trees at one smacker. We were making sneeds. Four times as fast as before, and that Lorax, he didn't show up anymore. Bye. But the next week, he knocked on my new office door. He snapped, I'm the Lorax who speaks for the trees which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. But I'm also in charge of the brown barbaloots who played in the shade in their barbaloot suits and happily lived eating truffula fruits. Now, thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffula fruit to go around and my poor barbaloots are all getting the crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. Oh, who are they? Yeah, the brown barbaloots or barbaloots. They loved living here, but I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food, and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried, and he sent them away. I, the one, sir, felt sad as I watched them all go, but business is business, and business must grow. Regardless of crummies and tummies, you know. Bye bye, Barbaloots. Oh my. I meant no harm, I most truly did not. But I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. I biggered my factory, I biggered my roads, I biggered my wagons, I biggered the loads of the thieves I shipped out. I was shipping them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went right on biggering, selling more needs, and I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Uh-oh. What is it? Yeah, it's a factory. Then he again came back. I was fixing some pipes when that old nuisance Lorax came back with more gripes. I am the Lorax, he coughed, and he <coughs> whiffed. He sneezed and he sniffed. He snargled, he sniffed. <coughs> One slur, he cried with a cruffless croak. One slur, you're making such smogulous smoke. My poor swanny swans, why, they can't sing a note. 
No one can sing who has <coughs> smog in his throat. Who are they? Yes, Swanee Swans. Who is he? They have the Lorax. And so, <coughs> said the Lorax, please pardon my cough. They cannot live, so I'm sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smog you've smogged up around here. <coughs> oh, so bad. Oh, thank you, milk tea. That's the end of part three of the Lorax. We'll be back for the final part. I hope not too long from now. Take care and make sure you don't get sick.